Russian TV doesn't even hide the fact that abandoned houses in Kursk Oblast are being robbed by their own army. Most complaints come from Glushkovsky district. A certain Alexandra says that after returning, she saw a house with broken windows, a broken garage gate, from which a car was stolen and tools were taken. The house was also looted. The looters also reached other homes, and the owners who returned from the gates, wide open, garbage in the rooms and no TVs, refrigerators, washing machines, or other appliances. One of the displaced women discovered that her refrigerator was being sold online as used equipment. In another video, the owner showed a completely looted store. The shelves in the premises were empty and the air conditioner was broken. Russian occupiers from the military police in the video claim, in contrast, that there are no looters in Koronevo. The settlement is constantly patrolled. The announcer in the video agreed that there may not be looters in Koronevo, but the situation in the Glushkovsky district is different. Recall residents of the village of Koronevo in the Kursk region complained to Putin, as well as the heads of the Russian Defense Ministry, the Prosecutor General, the head of the Investigative Committee, and the Chief Military Prosecutor, about the facts of mass looting committed by Russian military personnel during the so-called counter-terrorist operation after the entry of Ukrainian armed forces units into the region. People write that there was not a single day of Ukrainian army presence in Koronevo, but after the arrival of Russian military in the village, dozens of residential buildings, shops, gas stations and pharmacies were looted. They say there are numerous accounts of men in Russian military uniforms breaking down doors of evacuated homes, taking away belongings and valuables, and shooting dogs to stop them from interfering with the looting. Russian soldiers also steal cars and agricultural equipment that their owners did not manage to take away. It is no secret that stolen property is taken away through fields and open roads, the statement said. There is no official response from the Russian authorities to the cry from the heart of the indignant Kursk residents who believe in the fair Putin. Sure. <laughs> Footage has been released showing the exchange of bodies of Russian and Ukrainian servicemen who died in Russia's Kursk region. As can be seen from the photos taken and shared by the Russian military, dozens of Russian soldiers captured by the Ukrainian army have been returned. Some of them are wounded. At the same time, Ukrainian fighters who were in captivity have also been returned. It should be noted that the Ukrainian army launched large-scale incursion into Russia's Kursk region three months ago. It should be noted that this is the first prisoner exchange since the beginning of hostilities in Kursk.
Footage has been released showing the exchange of bodies of Russian and Ukrainian servicemen who died in Russia's Kursk region. As can be seen from the photos taken and shared by the Russian military, dozens of Russian soldiers captured by the Ukrainian army have been returned. Some of them are wounded. At the same time, Ukrainian fighters who were in captivity have also been returned. It should be noted that the Ukrainian army launched large-scale incursion into Russia's Kursk region three months ago. It should be noted that this is the first prisoner exchange since the beginning of hostilities in Kursk. South Korea and the US on Friday conducted their first-ever joint live-fire exercise using unmanned aerial vehicles as part of efforts to demonstrate their readiness. South Korea's RQ-4B Global Hawk reconnaissance aircraft and the US MQ-9 Reaper strike drone were mobilized for the training, according to South Korea's Air Force. South Korea and the US have been expanding their regular military drills to cope with North Korea's evolving nuclear threats. The exercise took place a day after North Korea test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile, which demonstrated a potential advancement in its ability to launch long-range nuclear attacks on the mainland US. South Korea's foreign ministry said on Friday it has imposed unilateral sanctions on 11 North Korean individuals and four organizations for their alleged roles in procuring missile components and generating foreign currency to fund Pyongyang's weapons program. The sanctions are largely symbolic given that financial transactions between the Koreas have been suspended for years.